Greetings, everyone. This is Mr. Mull. Today I'm doing a, a podcast on the three forms of radioactive emissions and really what do I mean by radioactive. So we're going to go ahead and get started here today. First off, let's define some terms. When I say radioactivity, what I'm talking about is the nucleus of some atom spontaneously emitting pieces. Um, it turns out that the, an atom is more stable the closer the number of protons is to the number of neutrons. It's kind of like a, a still stable nucleus formula. Um, basically, as long as I, ha I have no more than one and a half times the number of protons, uh, no more neutrons than one and a half times the number of protons, usually a is certain isotope of an atom will be stable. Example, lead. Lead has 82 protons no matter what. But the more neutrons you jam in the nucleus, the more likely it's going to be unstable and it's going to seek to relieve some of the tension with all those protons jammed together by emitting pieces. So any more than 123 neutrons uh, and it's probably going to be a radioactive isotope of lead. So let's talk about the different pieces that an atom could emit. First off we have the alpha particle. Okay, the alpha particle was that giant particle that, was, uh, that Rutherford used in his gold foil experiment. Um, and this was the particle that deflected just a little bit. Um, based upon how the scattering patterns, he was able to determine that it had a charge of positive 2 uh, as it was deflecting away from that positive nucleus. And looking uh, over here to the right, we have this kind of a diagram of, of, of Rutherford's experiment. And here's our beta particle, or our alpha particle, uh, that was being emitted. And it actually deflected slightly less than he expected. Therefore, the particle must have been more massive. Um, so this plus two charge, this two protons, that was accounted for. But because it actually deflected a little bit less, there must have been some more mass in there. And this was actually a piece of evidence that proved the existence of this no charge a massive particle in the nucleus known as the neutron. So based upon how it deflected, there must have been two more particles of that size. Uh, they were neutrons. So we represent this alpha particle with a helium nucleus because helium has two protons and two neutrons. Uh, most stable isotope of helium has the same mass number of four. So we actually use the helium nucleus to represent an alpha particle. So let me do an example of a problem. Uh, let's talk about polonium. Let's say I have a polonium uh, atom, and this is polonium-210. Okay, that's my isotope. And polonium has 84 protons. That's the atomic number. So this thing is going to uh, be unstable, and it's going to shoot out an alpha particle. So I'd represent that by my helium nucleus. So it shoots out two protons and two neutrons. Okay, so there we go. So what's left over is what we call the parent nuclei, that polonium, that parent nuclei, is going to have whatever was there after my helium uh, nucleus was kicked out. So I lose four atomic mass uh, units, four AMU, that leaves me with 206 left over. And I lose two protons, I had 84, well now I have 82. The thing is, is 82 protons is no longer talking about polonium it's a different element. So what actually happens is the identity of my uh, element changes when I lose some of my nucleus and it becomes an atom uh, of lead. So there's lead. A cool uh, trick you can do um, is look at the uh, conservation of matter. I have four uh, AMU in my helium nucleus and I have alpha particle and I have 206 left over in my lead uh, add those together, and that gives me the 210 I started with. Same thing here. I have 82 protons and two protons. Add them together, I get my 84. So that's kind of a check that you have the right stuff on the right-hand side. So there's alpha particle emission. Let's talk about beta particle emission. Beta particle. Okay, this was the smaller deflect, or this was the one that deflected a lot, the much less massive particle. And its mass is so small, we actually... Um, we actually say that it has a zero mass because the electron is so tiny. It's an electron from the nucleus. A little bit of theory behind this. A neutron is thought to have actually be, actually be a proton-fused 
to an electron. A neutron has a mass that's 0 0.00055 AMU greater than a proton. It's so small we usually ignore it and just round to one, but it's thought that the electron is actually, uh, electron and proton fused together make a neutron, and that also accounts for the, the neutral charge. So what happens is an electron from the nucleus will actually be emitted, and we call it a beta particle, and well now that the electron's there, I have this uneven charge, the number of protons actually goes up for a beta particle emission. So let's go ahead and look at an example of one of these. Uh, so if I lose this beta particle from my parent nuclei, let's look at polonium again. Polonium, uh, 84 protons. So if we lose this uh, alpha particle, I'm just going to do a little electron here. It's essentially massless. And I'm going to put a negative 1 down here for its uh, this kind of this, this atomic number location. Okay, you're going to look at the negative and it's going to be kind of weird, but it's okay. Watch what happens. So I kick out that electron from the nucleus. My protons are going to go up. So I lost one little tiny electron, and my number of protons is going to go from 84 to 85. Because an electron is essentially massless, my mass number is still 210. So here's what I have left over. 210, uh, and then atomic number is now 85. I look at my periodic table, and this element has become atmium. I can do a double check on conservation of matter. 0 plus 210 gives me 210. 85 minus 1 gives me 84. That works out nicely. Okay. So these are my two particles. A new atmium, um, a new atmium atom and this little electron from the nucleus called a beta particle. The last thing I want to talk about today is conservation, uh, gamma radiation. Gamma radiation is just basically a super high energy uh, radiation, super high energy. It's not actually a particle, it's just pure energy that accompanies alpha and beta particle emission. And this radiation energy does not show up in the product, but it is what we fear and cause damage to our cells and do all kinds of bad stuff. I want to leave you with one last example problem just to make sure you've got it. Let's say I have a atom of nickel and it's an unstable isotope of nickel, nickel 63 and let's say it's going to radiate a beta particle. So I'm going to go ahead and it shoots out a beta particle, my little electron from the nucleus, massless, okay, negative one, and I need to go ahead and look at what happens when I lose that little particle. The mass doesn't change overall, okay, it's basically massless, but my number of protons has to go up because a neutron has actually kicked out that little electron and the number of protons goes up to 29. And my element has changed from nickel to copper. Double check at the end, 63 plus 0 is 63. 29 minus 1 is 28. And there we go. This is a little crash course on uh, radioactive emissions, and I hope it was helpful.